Growing up, there were certain TV shows that just always seemed to be on in our home. And for whatever reason, Bewitched, starring the lovely Elizabeth Montgomery, was one of those programs. So what happened to Elizabeth Montgomery, especially after Bewitched ended? Don't worry, I will tell you everything I know. And at the very end of this video, I'm going to have a special treat for you. But first, let's take a little trip down memory lane. Yep. Back in the early to mid-70s, the weekday morning lineup was pretty darn awesome in my area. There was Andy Griffith, I Dream of Jeannie, and this show. No wonder I would pretend to be sick so that I could stay at home and watch all of those great TV shows. I bet a few of you did the same thing at least a time or two, right? Anyway, you get the point. Whenever I was playing hooky, I would always make sure that Bewitched was on my list of must-see television for the day. During its original run, eight seasons on ABC, Bewitched was both a critical and a ratings hit, although the ratings did die down a bit towards the end. The reason for the show's success was its stellar cast. Elizabeth Montgomery was great, but so was Dick York as Sam's beleaguered husband Darren, I should say Darren number one. Also Agnes Moorhead was phenomenal as Samantha's disapproving mother. A witch marry a mere mortal? Unheard of! But at the end of the day, it all came down to this lady, and I've got to say, Elizabeth was great. Wait, let me take that back. She was beyond great. The fact of the matter is that she was perfect for that role. She had charm, a wicked sense of humor, and a type of beauty that is best described as both wholesome and breathtaking. What can I say? Elizabeth was just perfect for the role of Samantha Stephens. I have also got to mention that I truly loved the episodes where Montgomery played both Sam and her extremely crazy cousin Serena. Those episodes were tons of fun and allowed Montgomery to really let loose and show her wild side. After Bewitched, Montgomery moved on to television movies. Extremely memorable for me was a movie where she played Lizzie Borden. From what I've read, it turns out that Montgomery was a distant cousin to the real Lizzie Borden. What a weird world, huh? Anyway, I don't believe Montgomery was aware of that fact while she made the movie, but maybe, just maybe, that's why she was so convincing in the role. I'm sure she made other genres, but as I think back, it seems like she favored working in westerns. In Mrs. Sundance, Montgomery starred with future husband Robert Foxworth, and Bill Starr was truly an underrated movie that was released all the way back in 1980. It is a hidden gem. Montgomery is awesome as the title character, but really, this movie just clicks on all cylinders. It's really great. She was Bill Starr. It's a strange life you lead, Bill. It's my life. She rode with Jesse James, and no man could claim her as his own. You can't accept me the way I am. You'll never be happy with me, Sam. Drawn to a reckless life that she tried to keep from her children. I ain't even in your life. Her time was running out. You hear a clock ticking? Elizabeth Montgomery is the woman who couldn't live by the rules. The legendary Bill Starr. Next... Montgomery definitely had her critics because of some of the causes that she chose to get behind. She was very politically active during the 70s and 80s, and Elizabeth was one of the earliest celebrities to support gay rights. Here she is with actor Dick Sargent, yep, Darren number two, acting as the co-grand marshal at a gay rights parade. I truly do admire Montgomery for her willingness to take a stand and act on her beliefs. I also admire her friendship and undying loyalty to her fellow bewitched actor. In my mind, regardless of your politics, that is a truly admirable trait. For years, Montgomery had battled colon cancer, and by the early 90s, she believed that she had beaten it once and for all. Because of that belief, she ignored flu-like symptoms that she was experiencing while filming Deadline for Murder. When she did finally go to see a doctor, she was told, that the cancer had returned with a vengeance and unfortunately had progressed to a point where treatment was not a viable option. So Elizabeth opted to return home with Foxworth and bravely live out her remaining days with family and friends. Yeah, she left us way too young. She really did. She was just 62 when she passed away. But what Elizabeth Montgomery did during those 62 years, well, I think it was pretty darn awesome. She entertained us. She built lasting friendships, strong relationships that supported her until the very end, and she was true to herself throughout it all. She always spoke up for what she believed in. Simply put, 
Elizabeth Montgomery tried to make the world a better place, and you know what? I believe she succeeded. In honor of Elizabeth, if you ever find yourself in Salem, Massachusetts, you will find a six-foot-tall bronze statue of her near the Essex Street Pedestrian Mall. Unveiled in 2005, this whimsical monument features Samantha on her broom and flying in front of a crescent moon. Now, do you remember that special treat I promised at the beginning of this video? Here it is. If you head on over to the Classic TV Rewind channel right here on YouTube, you can watch the pilot episode of Bewitched absolutely for free. Yep, something for nothing. You can't beat that. So that's it. What do you think? Were you a fan of Bewitched and in particular Elizabeth Montgomery? Share your memories in the comments section and while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. Talk about music, movies, and mostly television from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.